The day in every way belonged to Greg Pruitt, the little guy with the torn jersey trademark. Of course, Cleveland's main man is the little guy from Oklahoma, Greg Pruitt, the top rusher and second leading receiver in the AFC. Greg Pruitt, number 34. First, Greg Pruitt exploded over right guard for 65 yards, and the score was 2013. The 53 yard dash by Greg Pruitt put the Browns in a commanding position at half. Then Pruitt sweeping left for 13. And Pruitt sweeping right for 26. On the day, little number 34 personally accounted for 238 yards of offense and put the ball in field goal range. Cleveland quarterback swung a pass to Pruitt, who took advantage of some good blocking and his own dazzling talent. The Falcons, after Cleveland's Greg Pruitt number 34 got done with them, are one and five. Pruitt rushed for 191 yards and set up a 14 to nothing Cleveland lead. Saw Pruitt do it again. Pruitt's 45-yard run set up the winning touchdown. As is their tradition, however, one thing they have been able to do is run the ball. With Leroy Kelly gone and Bo Scott infirm, number 34 Greg Pruitt has become the chief source of excitement. As it was, their longest pass was thrown by versatile Pruitt. It went to journeyman receiver number 42 Richardson for a 60-yard touchdown. The second the two have teamed up for this year. Greg Pruitt took the opening kickoff, cut inside the blocking wedge, went outside, was one tackler away from going the distance. Greg Pruitt on a play that signaled the brilliant season he would have, had lived the Browns' first touchdown of 1975. Greg Pruitt's touchdown with one minute to play appears to wrap up the Browns' ninth straight win over the Steelers in Cleveland. From the opening kickoff up in Foxborough, the Patriots began overlooking the secrets of their success when they let Greg Pruitt do it to them for 88 yards and a touchdown. Pruitt's kickoff coast from coast to coast was his first since leaving Oklahoma, where he played for Chuck Fairbanks, the man who is now the head coach of the New England Patriots. Another look at Pruitt's prance through the paths once again recalls a lesson that there is a big place for a quick little man in a big man's game. And no one is more aware of this than Chuck Fairbanks, who has used both Randy Bataha and Mac Heron to great advantage this season. But this time, Fairbanks reaped the whirlwind as Pruitt, who used to do it for him, now did it to him, and that's irony, English students, that's irony. The exciting runs of their scat back, Greg Pruitt, number 34. He ripped for 182 yards, and despite hurting half the season with injuries, barely missed achieving the 1,000-yard mark for the fourth consecutive year. A Greg Pruitt's 158 yards rushing sailed Cleveland to 44 points. In the end, Cleveland's speed and power cost Kansas City head coach Paul Wigan his job and placed the Browns in the lead of the rugged AFC Central Division. When help came from an unexpected but highly encouraging source. Greg Pruitt, injured nearly the whole season, iced the game with a sensational, skittering, twisting touchdown that propelled the Browns back into the playoff picture. Saw them take a 17-point lead into the fourth quarter.
the offense sustained several long drives, led by Mike Phipps and Craig Pruitt, who tore through the heralded silver and black defense for his first 100-yard day of the season. Phipps found Greg Pruitt behind Gerald Irons, and Cleveland had a surprising 17-7 first quarter lead. Linebacker Mike Woods, number 59, hit his intention to blitz until the last possible moment. Sight Cooley picked out Greg Pruitt, number 34, in the area vacated by Woods and hit him for the touchdown. And Greg Pruitt joined the hallowed ranks of Marion Mutley, Jim Brown, and Leroy Kelly with his great season. The muscular little man with the blinding speed raced for 1,067 yards on the ground and had an additional 700 yards on receptions and returns. In 1975, Greg Pruitt proved he is another in a long line of Cleveland super runners. Two touchdown receptions. Cleveland earned a 27-26 victory and a share of first place. He wrote the Cleveland Browns team record book. Late in the third period, the Browns were tied with Oakland. The winning touchdown was scored by Greg Pruitt, who, like a water bug slipping through the Cincinnati defense, totaled 304 yards this happy day. Biters in the season's opening week. One in New York, where the Jets and Browns put the ball in the air 67 times. Phipps beat a blitz by giving to Pruitt, who sailed untouched into the end zone with a winning score. The masterful 97-yard clutch drive. Jim Plunkett. And Calvin Muhammad hooking up for two touchdowns. And that's been the story in the second half. Pruitt unleashing. That's the Porter Hayes missing. And here's Pruitt who could go left all the way. Greg Pruitt doing something that is rarely done against the Redskins special team. And that is he has scored a touchdown. He made a decision, Marv that I think most coaches would stole to give himself a little free running room, elected to catch the ball, and boy, when he made that break right in there, he made a break against the best special team to play in the game. He gets around Jeff Hayes, and from there on in, it's nothing but a cakewalk. Talk about a drastic turnaround. It is being recorded as a 97-yard punt return. 55,000 here at RFK. Sensational Greg Pruitt, with his straightaway speed and hairpin turns, is an exciting sight. A glittering showcase of talent in orange and brown. Pruitt joined Jim Brown and Bobby Mitchell as the only Browns to gain over 200 yards in a single game. Pruitt's great performance earned him a standing ovation from the Cleveland crowd, and the glow from his accomplishments enveloped everyone, especially the Browns' young offensive line. There is no greater testimony to their development than Greg Pruitt's great season, which reached a crescendo this day against the Chiefs. The Cleveland offense totaled nearly 500 yards. The day in every way belonged to Greg Pruitt. The little guy with a torn jersey trademark 